Hello, welcome to episode 2 in my ICE tutorial series for the TI-84 plus CE. Uh, today we're going to be going over the basic draw commands, uh, so stuff like shapes and uh, colors that are all built into the graphics library by Mateo. Um, and we're not going to go into sprites, tile maps, and some of the more complex things today. This is just going to be things like rectangles, circles, lines. Okay, so I have a basic program here. Um, we uh, name the program, clear the home screen, open up the graphics screen, wait for the user to press enter, and then exit the graphics screen. So that should, you should know what all this does by now, and we cover that a little bit in the last video, so you might want to watch that if you haven't. So let's throw in, let's color the background of the screen, because this is also something we did last time. Um, and wrong one. Okay, so to color the screen, it's debt 5 and then a color, uh, 0 through 255. 224 is red. So let's do that. So that'll color the entire screen red. And this can be any color. And that'll just uh, wipe the entire screen one color. Okay, so let's add something to the screen now. And I'm going to go with the most basic of shapes of rectangle. Uh, and let's... Okay, so I'm, I want to talk about clip and no clip. If you do some work on your own outside of this and take a look at ICE's commands, you'll notice that some things uh, have a clip and some things are no clip. And what that means is, uh, we'll, we'll talk about, I'm going to do an entire video dedicated to uh, how clipping works and stuff like that. But what you need to know is that no clip is faster than clip, but if the shape would run off the screen, if you don't give it valid uh, point values and stuff like that, if it would go off the screen, then it can cause issues in like memory corruption. So you want to use no clip if you're going for speed uh, and you don't need to clip, but you also have to be more careful with it. So we're going to be using no clip for all of these because we really don't need it to be clipped. And uh, that's all you need to know for now. Okay, so a non-clipped filled rectangle, which is the fastest way to output a filled rectangle to the screen. It's going to be debt 42. We need an X value, a Y value, a width, and a height. So I'll give it an X value of 50, a Y value of 20. So it should be farther in from the right, from the left to the right. So it should be farther in from the left than it is from the top. It should be like right there. And then we need a width and a height. So I'm just going to make this pretty long. So 100 long and 30 tall. And if you're wondering, so these are all uh, pixel values, like 50 pixels down, 20 pixels in, 100 pixels long. The screen is 320 pixels by 240 pixels, uh, just in case you need to know that. And before I compile and run this program, I want to give this shape a color. And to do that, we're going to use a global color index command. What it is is det2, comma, and then your color, 0 through 255. Uh, and this is similar to, like, last uh, episode we did the text scaling. And when you apply the text scaling value, any line of text, whether it be here or here or here, any line of text below it would take on that value. So just like that, when we apply a global color index, that color index will apply for everything until we change the color index. So if I put in another rectangle underneath this, it would be this color. And the color that I want to choose is, I mean, I'm just not really sure. So 20, I think, should be a dark green. Okay, so let's run that, and we should have a red background, a rectangle on top of it, and that rectangle should be dark green, blue. Okay, um, but you get the idea. So let's take a look. We are 50 in from the left, 20 in from the top, 100 pixels long, and I believe it was 30 pixels tall was the value I put in. Uh, so you can see there's a shape. It is a non-clipped filled rectangle. That is debt 42. Okay, we can hit enter. And that will t 
take us to the end of the program because of the pause. And let's do some more shapes. So I want to give this rectangle an outline. And to do that, I'm going to, first of all, I want to change the color value because if we use the same color, then the outline won't be visible. It'll just look like it's blended in with the rectangle. Uh, so I'm going to use Det2 and then 0, which will set the color index to black. Now, let's use Det and let's do a non-clipped framed rectangle. So basically, that's just an outline of a rectangle. And let's see, non clipped framed rectangle is going to be debt 41 and because I want this overlaid exactly where the filled rectangle is I can use the same values so 20 so 50 20 100 30 and you have to keep in mind the order in which you're drawing these because if I had drawn this because these two are the exact same uh, coordinates and values, if the filled rectangle had gone on top of the framed, we wouldn't be able to see the framed. But we put the framed rectangle afterwards because we know it doesn't take up the entire filled rectangle. It's only providing an outline. So uh, keep in mind that whatever you put in later will overlap whatever was in before. Okay, so that should put a frame around the rectangle we already have. Uh, but what if we want to do a shape that isn't a rectangle? Uh, so say we want a circle. Uh, so a non-clipped filled circle is debt 40. And I'm going to do it up uh, within this debt 20 but before the debt 2 0. So the frame should be black of the framed rectangle. The filled rectangle should be blue and so should the filled circle that we draw uh, because the filled circle is of course uh, below the blue color but before the black color so remember this applies to all shapes okay so debt 40 will give us our circle we need an X and a Y value for the center uh, and for the center let's just make it the center of the screen so 320 wide, divide that by 2, that's 160. Divide 240 by 2, that's 120. So that will be at the center of the screen, and then we need a radius, which is half the diameter of the circle. So if we make that 60, mm, 60, it'll be a 120 uh, wide circle. Okay, so X, Y, radius. Let's run that and see what happens. Remember, we should have our filled rectangle, our filled circle, and our rectangle outline. So we do that. You can see we have our filled circle right in the center. It's that blue color. We still have our framed rectangle up there. And you can see, maybe, that there is actually a line around it. If you look at the difference between it and the circle, you can really see. OK. So let's go and let's make a framed circle. And just so that you can see this a little better, I'm going to move the frame over uh, just a little bit. OK. So I'm going to make, I want to make a circle frame. And let's just give it a color value of 100 don't know quite what color that is going to be i haven't really looked it up okay a circle outline is just going to be debt 33 this is going to be a clipped circle outline because there isn't a no clip circle command again we need our x our y value and then the radius so what i can do here is if there's a radius of 60 then this is the starting x value 60 plus 160 will give us 220 uh, so I can make the center of the circle the edge of the other circle I'll give it the same Y value in 60 so we should see it'll be almost like a Venn diagram look with the filled circle and the framed circle so framed circle the syntax is the exact same remember we need debt 33 to uh, declare it a framed circle uh, an X value, a Y value, and a radius. Okay, um, and while I'm here, I'm just going to throw in a line command and a uh, line, uh, no, a non clipped line is 37. We need 
an x and y value so I'm just gonna say like 10 10 to 40 40 and that'll be whatever this color is uh, and that's that's fine for the line okay run test so we have a lot of stuff going on and unfortunately you can't see it that well let's see if I turn down my brightness that might help a little bit um, okay so you can see we have that framed rectangle remember I moved it over just so that you could really see that it was in fact a framed rectangle we have our framed circle remember it's overlapping like a Venn diagram that's what we wanted because we put the center point at the very edge of the circle and the way the way we did that was we took the x value of the center and added the radius and used that as our new center uh, and then the other new thing is we have this line going diagonally over here uh, so I don't want this video to run too much longer and I think all I'll do is run over horizontal and vertical lines and you don't have to use these these are just if you're using only a horizontal or vertical line then you might want to use these so horizontal line uh, a non-clipped horizontal line is 38 uh, we need an X a Y value and a length so unlike the line that we drew down here where we gave it a starting X and Y and an ending X and Y up here we give an X a Y and a length uh, because we know it's going to be horizontal so we don't need another coordinate uh, to act as to help calculate the slope or anything so let's give it a start point of um, 10, 120, and then let's go down, uh, let's go across, sorry, 100. So that'll be our horizontal line. Let's make a vertical line. Vertical line, non-clipped, debt 39. Let's give it the same starting point as the horizontal line and give it a height of 100. And here's something to keep in mind with these. Uh, remember, uh, so we, we only have a value over here uh, for length or, well, yeah, length or height, and not an ending x and y coordinate. So if you're using a vertical line, which would be here, it'll move down uh, from the coordinate uh, that you gave here and if you're using a horizontal line it's going to move to the right of whatever you gave here so if you can't if if you can't figure out the math actively as you go then sometimes it's better just to use a line command instead of uh, horizontal and vertical because you can't move right to left so if that'll be a problem then uh, you'll have to use line command instead of horizontal and vertical and you can see we did in fact get that horizontal and vertical so remember this was our starting point and you can see that the lines moved to the right for horizontal and down for vertical so that's how those two commands work I think that's probably going to be it for today and I'm going to make another video soon I think I'm gonna start to cover maybe get key uh, so uh, off to see. But anyways, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed and uh, keep your eyes out for the next video.